Here are some big changes the Steam Deck needs. So now that the Steam Deck is officially past its first month out in the wild, Valve put out a video this morning detailing all the changes they have made since they launched it back in February. And many, many changes have been made to the Steam Deck. And I wanna say all the changes they've made have been positive, but I know someone's gonna come up with one change they made that wasn't positive. So we'll say almost all the changes they've made since the beginning have been positive, and that's great. If it wasn't clear from the fact that I have a YouTube channel all about it, I have been absolutely loving my time with the Steam Deck. And even though I've been playing a lot of games at 30 frames per second, I've been preferring them on this device to my main gaming PC, which I think says a lot about how good the Steam Deck is, even at the beginning of its life cycle. And one thing I really have to commend Valve for with this thing from the very beginning is the fact that they read people's feedback or they listen to it or they watch it here on YouTube and then they very quickly, like within days or even a week, implement changes that people are directly asking for. There are a ton of examples I could list, but I'll pick the most recent one just off the top of my head. People were really requesting the game mode keyboard over in the desktop mode, and not only did Valve bring that over, they even brought over the split trackpad typing from the old version of SteamOS because that was something people were asking a lot for. And there are plenty of other examples of requests being directly asked for over on the subreddit and then Valve just implementing them a few days later, which is awesome. I love it. Because over on the PS5, you basically have to wait for Sony to package up as many small updates as they can into one big firmware update that they can kind of pitch as a news story. I like how Valve is doing it, where they come up with a change and they implement it quickly. But like with any console launch, especially with one like the Steam Deck, which is a brand new device, there are some things that aren't exactly perfect. And since I just mentioned, Valve watches this stuff and makes changes based on what people request. For today's video, I put together a list of things I would like to see changed in the future on the Steam Deck. And if you like this video and you want me to do more of them, or you want to share something you'd like changed on the Steam Deck, you can go follow me over on Twitter at Stay Deck Ready. And also, I'm getting closer and closer to 10,000 subscribers thanks to you guys. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So if you've watched these videos and you've enjoyed them or you're new here and you're really enjoying this video, help me out by clicking the red subscribe button and setting your notifications to all. So the first big change I want with the Steam Deck has to do with the shader pre-caching thing I talked about in my one month later video. Now I said in that video, every time I turned on my Steam Deck, it seemed like it was downloading new shaders for games that had downloaded shaders for the night prior or even as soon as an hour prior to me turning on the device. And I don't really like that because, you know, it's maxing out the Steam Deck and making the fan rev up and that eats into battery life. Now, I weirdly got a bunch of comments from people saying that it's not actually downloading the shaders. It's just caching them from the game that's already downloaded on my device. So I decided to just put this to the test. I rebooted my Steam Deck and sure enough, there was like 20 downloads listed in the download list. It immediately started pre-caching shaders like it usually does. So I went into offline mode. I completely turned off Wi-Fi and as as soon as I did that, it stopped caching the shaders. All of these downloads completely went away. So I think it really is using the internet to download these shaders from Steam. And the weirdest thing is, no matter where you look, no one can agree on what it's actually doing and where it's actually downloading these shaders from and why it's downloading them so much. I saw one comment where someone said, as you play games, Steam takes the shaders you're caching and uploads them to its servers so other people can download them. And that's why when you turn on your Steam Deck, it's downloading new shaders that other people have cached, which kind of makes sense and would be pretty cool. I just don't really know if that's what it's doing. Another theory I've seen is that when you use Proton Experimental, it's downloading new shaders because Proton is updating regularly. And when you update Proton, you've got to re-download all your shaders, which also makes sense. But I went over into the desktop mode and I went to the Steam Play menu and I am just using the latest version of Proton. I'm not using Experimental. I'm only using it for select games like Arkham Knight, which does update its shaders quite a bit. If I had to rank the games on my Steam Deck that are updating their shaders the most, Arkham Knight is definitely the number one, but there are a ton of other games. I'm just using the normal version of Proton, like the latest release. So that doesn't really make too much sense either. So one request I have is that Valve explains why this is happening to so many people every time they turn their Steam Deck on. That would be great. I would also like it if Valve gave me control over how often it actually checks if there's new shaders to download. Like if I could set it to happen once a week or once a month or every day 
or every hour if I wanted to, that would be great. You know, give me that control that you're giving me pretty much in every other aspect across the device. And while I was digging around online trying to figure out why this is happening so much, I saw some people saying you can just go into the settings and turn off shader pre-caching. I wouldn't do that because shader pre-caching stops stuttering in a lot of games. Jedi Fallen Order, for example, runs a lot better on my Steam Deck when you just start it up than it does on my main PC because all the shaders are pre-cached from the beginning. The silver lining here is that even though when you connect to the internet, it starts downloading new shaders, it should keep the original ones you already downloaded stored. So if you're out and about and you boot up your Steam Deck, it's not gonna be like, hey, I deleted all your shaders, now I have to re-download them and you're not on the internet, so enjoy the stuttering in whatever game you're about to play. And this is kind of like an addendum request. I don't know how complicated this would be or if Valve can even do it, but I would like it if they figured out some way to get Proton GE included, like you could opt into it and have it downloaded in the game mode because I've used Proton GE to play games that just straight up don't work on the Steam Deck. Like Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. If you use Proton GE 7.14, it runs incredibly well. And Batman Arkham Asylum runs really well if you use Proton GE. So yeah, I would like it if Valve included it in the Steam OS software in some fashion. The second big change I would like from Valve on the Steam Deck is to work on the verification process. So as a whole, I think they're doing a really good job. They're up to like 2000 games completely verified to run well on the Steam Deck. It just doesn't really seem like that verification process is totally foolproof. Linus Tech Tips talked about this on the WAN show, but Horizon Zero Dawn is a great example of a game that's verified, right? Like if you go into the benchmark, set it to original settings, it'll run really well in that benchmark at 30 frames per second and everything seems fine. And if you start the game up, play through the beginning of the game, yeah, it looks and runs really well at that original settings preset. But if you've already got a save for Horizon Zero Dawn and you pick up around halfway through the game, you not only get frame drops, you get stutters, you get textures popping in. It is a much less optimized game if you're farther in it than it is at the beginning. And there are plenty of other examples of games that say they're verified, but then you start them up and if you have a later game save, they don't exactly work as well as they do in the beginning of the game. And then on the flip side with stuff like Arkham Knight, that game is listed as completely unsupported on the Steam Deck, but I'm just using the normal version of Proton with it and it looks and runs really well. I have it at 30 frames per second locked. I would say it's crashed about twice in the 29 hours I played it, which to me is not worthy of being considered unsupported. Like it was a weird fluke both times. I've looked around and it doesn't seem like it's crashing anymore for other people. So seeing games like that, which are listed as unsupported, but work just fine is kind of a bummer because people are gonna go by that verification system. Like the average person who's not just watching YouTube or rolling through the subreddit every morning before they go to work, right? They're not gonna sit there and try games that aren't supported because they're just gonna trust what Valve is saying, which rightfully so, it's a verification process by Valve for a reason. It should be trustworthy. So long story short, I would really like to see some internal improvement on Valve's end to check different parts of the game to really make sure it runs well and to really verify if a game is unsupported because Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, I mentioned that it runs really well with Proton GE, but if you use Proton Experimental, it also runs pretty well. You get a little bit of frame drops, a little bit of stuttering during cutscenes, but I also wouldn't go as far as to call that unsupported and it's listed as unsupported on the Steam Deck. And then for games like Batman Arkham Asylum, which are also listed as unsupported, where you have to do a little bit of tweaking in the desktop mode to get it running, I would like a new option in the verification list that basically says this one will work, but you have to tweak it just a little bit to get it running. I don't want to sound super negative on this though, because having a verification process as a whole is great. So yeah, they've done a good job so far. There's just some minor improvements I think they could make that would make this process a whole lot better. The third big change I want is also linked to the verification process. I would really appreciate it if Valve could talk to more developers before games come out and let us know, the users of the Steam Deck, if this game is going to work or not. I'm just gonna keep rolling with Lego Star Wars because I have been playing so much of it on my Steam Deck, but that was a game where I just assumed it would run really well on the Steam Deck because there are so many other Lego games that run really well on the Steam Deck and these have never been the most demanding games ever, only to find deep in articles online that it just wouldn't be supported when the game came out. And that's frustrating because yeah, it's cool that Valve tested it before it came out and decided it would be unsupported, but it would have been cooler if they tested it, realized it was unsupported, said, hey guys, we tested Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, one of the biggest games of the year. We realized that it's going to be an unsupported game on the system and we're talking to TT Games right now to try and figure this out for the future. They have done that before with games like Dead by Daylight, Destiny 2. They've said they're working with Easy Anti-Cheat 
cheat. They've let us know when they're talking to other developers and software creators in the anti-cheat realm over there. But still, it would have been nice if they said, we tested it, it didn't work, but we're working on figuring this out because we know a lot of people want to play it. I would just like that transparency from Valve. Ghostwire Tokyo is another example. That game launched with a question mark. I would also call that one of the bigger releases this year since it is Bethesda, it is Tango Gameworks. It's a PlayStation 5 and PC exclusive that's getting some pretty good marketing. I would have liked it if Valve said that, yeah, when you start this game up for the first time, it uh, will crash to desktop. But then after that, it'll probably work just fine for you. I didn't use Proton GE. That one worked for me in Proton Experimental, which is an official inclusion by Valve. So yeah, I would just like it if Valve tested these games a little bit earlier and let us know if they were working on getting them working if they weren't, or if it's just like a lost cause. Because some games, no matter how much work Valve does talking to the developers, they just aren't gonna ever work on the Steam Deck. And you know, the list of those games is few and far between, so I'm okay with that. Just let us know. The fourth thing I want Valve to tweak a little bit with the Steam Deck is the game modes UI. I wanna point out at the beginning of this section that I think they've done a great job with the new version of Big Picture Mode, you know, the game mode on the Steam Deck. It's a massive improvement over Big Picture Mode. I was so excited when they announced that back when I was in college. I like rushed home, got the new beta version of Steam to try out Big Picture Mode, and it just was disappointing. It was a cool look, it was a cool feel, it just didn't really feel complete, and they never really finished it, in my opinion. This feels like it's 99% there, and that's great. All of the changes I think they need to make are minor and just cool features I want. The first thing I wanna highlight is I think they should make it easier to find your achievements on the Steam Deck. Like, you can get to it pretty much the same way you can on Steam Desktop now, but it doesn't really feel like an integral feature on the device. I don't know why this generation of consoles is so adamant about hiding trophies and achievements. The PlayStation 5, they did a good job fixing this, but when it launched, it was incredibly hard to find trophies, and now here we are with the Steam Deck, and it's kind of hard to find achievements. You know, this has basically replaced the Nintendo Switch for me, and I am going to be buying a lot less games on Xbox Series X and PS5 because of the Steam Deck, and one of the things that makes this console really cool is the fact that Steam has community features like the Xbox Series X and PS5. I just want the community stuff to be more front and center on the device. I want to be as proud of the fact that I have all the achievements in Destiny 2 on Steam as I am with the fact that I have the Platinum Trophy on my PS5. But again, in the grand scheme of things, that's a minor change and it doesn't totally matter all that much. It's just something I would like. So I saw over on the subreddit that someone figured out how to add a plugin to the three dots quick menu on the right side of the screen that adds a calculator tab to it. And I thought that was cool. I think it would be awesome if Valve had some official plugins there. One I can think of off the top of my head would be a Spotify one. That is one of the best features on the PlayStation 5 that you can just hit the PlayStation button on your DualSense and it'll bring up that little quick menu. And there's a music option there where if you're playing Destiny or an online game where the in-game sound doesn't really matter so much because you've heard it for hundreds and hundreds of hours, you can just play Spotify music and that's awesome. I would like to do the same thing on the Steam Deck. Now it's kind of there already. If you install Spotify from the Discover Store on the desktop mode and add it as a non-Steam game, you can open it and run it at the same time as a game. I would just like it built into the OS from Go because a lot of people use Spotify. It would be cool if they also included Apple Music because I have a subscription there too, but I'm not asking for too much. Just integrate Spotify in some way to that quick menu. And another tab I'd like them to add to that quick menu is a browser that you can quickly just pull up. Now you can, just like with Spotify, run Chrome at the same time as a game, and that is a pretty user-friendly experience. It would just be cool if while I'm playing a game, I could bring up a browser on top of the game, like I can on Steam right now by hitting Shift and Tab. I use that browser even though it's old and clunky all the time. You can actually run Discord's web client in it just fine. I check Twitter, I use the Spotify web app to change songs. Also, I look up stuff in Destiny, like when I'm working on an exotic quest. So yeah, having some overlay browser that you can use while you're playing a game on a Steam Deck would be great. They're already leagues ahead of Nintendo right now since you can actually do chat on the device, but that would bring them even farther ahead of Nintendo and that would make me really happy. And the last thing I want might be a little controversial, but I would like a complete Windows experience. Now I've said on the channel that I don't really care so much about having Windows on the Steam Deck. It would be nice to have Destiny 2 on the Steam OS side and it's cool being able to play it by installing Windows on the Steam Deck. And I think it's awesome that if you really dig in and learn how to do it, you can dual boot Windows, but it takes a little bit of tweaking and doing. I would say Valve has done a good job with Windows support on the Steam Deck so far. They've given us the important drivers, you know, like for the SD card slot, the graphics drivers, stuff like that. It would be nice if we also got the audio drivers for the headphone jack and the speakers because those are still 
MIA. They've also added TPM support to the BIOS through a beta update, so that should be coming through the stable update channel soon. Basically, that just allows you to install Windows 11 fully. I just want them to finish the experience by A, giving us those drivers that we're still missing, and B, give us the ability to fully dual boot Windows, because yeah, I would like to play Destiny 2 on the thing, and while I've said in other videos that I don't really care so much about having Windows on the device, they've given us the ability. Like Valve themselves opened the door to having Windows on this device, I just want them to get it all the way there. They don't have to keep supporting it after they get it running completely, they just gotta finish what they started, and I think they're going to do that sooner rather than later. It's just not done yet, and I needed a fifth thing to complain about in this video. So while I'm at it, it would be great if they gave a SteamOS on desktop. I know you can install it through the recovery image, but it doesn't totally work on a lot of people's PCs, and it could potentially break your PC, which is bad. I just want SteamOS on my gaming laptop so I can play Elden Ring without stuttering at 60 frames per second. I don't think that's too much to ask, Valve, and I know you're working on it. I just want you to get it done sooner, but at the end of this video, all I'm gonna say is thanks for everything you've done so far, because when you compare the updates we've gotten from Valve on the Steam Deck just in the first month alone to every other console out there, they are doing a much better job giving people features they actually want. Like over on the PlayStation, still don't have 1440p support, still don't have variable refresh rate, and that console's been out for over a year and a half. Those are the five biggest things I want changed with the Steam Deck, so make sure you let me know what you want down in the comments below.